Hello, welcome to Physics Corner. Today the topic is motion for secondary school physics part 1. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about characteristics of moving bodies, relative motion, distance and displacement, speed and velocity, concept of average speed and instantaneous speed, acceleration at the end. Coming to the concept of a moving body. When you observe a moving body, what is the first characteristic that you observe? For example, if you are standing on a road and if you observe a car moving on the road, what is the first thing that you observe for a moving car on the road? Obviously, it is a change in the position of the car with respect to you. Here, you are the observer and you have observed that the car has changed its position from time to time. Coming to the next concept of a relative motion. If you are sitting in a train along with your friends or co-passengers, if I put you a question what exactly the co-passengers are doing, you would say they are sitting idle. But if I put the same question to a person standing or sitting on the platform of the railway station, he would have answered it as the passengers are traveling in the train at a speed equal to the speed of the train. Which means motion of an object is a relative phenomenon which is not absolute. It all depends on the position of the observer. If you are inside the train, you feel that your passengers are sitting. But if you stand outside the train, you feel that the passengers are actually moving. Hence, motion is a relative phenomenon. Coming to the next concept of distance and displacement. If a person want to travel from a point A to a point B, he has many choices of traveling. Let us assume there are two paths to travel, path 1 and path 2. You can see path 1 is a simple straight line from, path, from point A to point B, whereas path 2 is a long curve from point A to point B. Obviously, one would prefer to travel along a straight line because it is the shortest path between the points A and B. Here. We call this shortest path as displacement and the path which actually body travels is distance. Hence we define distance as the path covered by the body from one point to the other by continuously changing the direction. And the units of measurement are in SI system we measure in meters and in CGS system we measure in centimeters. If you would like to define displacement, it is the shortest distance between the initial and the final positions of the body along with direction. Means displacement has got a specific direction to mention and the units of measurement are same as that of distance. Let us see the differences between distance and displacement. The first difference being as follows. Distance is the length of the path covered. If the body travels from A to B along path 2, then the length of this path 2 covered is the distance. And displacement is the shortest path between A and B. If A and B has got a straight line joining them, then AB, the, the length of the straight line will be the displacement of the body. Second difference, distance has no unique direction. If you look here, if the person is traveling from A to B along the longest path possible here, then you can find at each and every point the direction has got a different meaning. Here the direction is as, as defined by the arrow, here the direction has got a different sign, here the direction has got a different sign, but if you observe the displacement, it has got a uniform direction right from starting point to the ending point. So the second difference between distance and displacement is the direction. Distance has no unique direction. Third difference. Displacement of a body can be zero but distance cannot. 
in fact displacement can never be greater than distance distance is always greater than or equal to displacement let us see the following example let us assume that a body travels from p to p again in a closed path the body starts its journey from point p and travels along a straight line to point q for 2 kilometers and from q it travels to a point r for, uh, for another 2 kilometers from r it travels to a point s for another kilometers and from s to p again it travels for 2 more kilometers and reaches the final point p again here if you observe the total distance traveled by the body is 8 kilometers but the displacement is absolutely zero because the initial and the final points are same let's look at the second example let us assume that a body travels in another closed closed path but here it is not a rectangular path it is a circular path if you are running around a circular cricket ground or a circular ground then you would certainly reach the same starting point again and again after each and every revolution. In that case, in the net displacement of you running around the circular ring is absolutely zero because you are reaching the same final point again and again. But the net distance is not zero. Hence, displacement of body can be zero. Coming to the fourth difference, distance is either greater than or equal to displacement. Displacement is always less than or equal to distance. Odometer. You must have heard about odometer. It is a device which is installed in vehicles to measure the distance covered by the vehicles. Hence, distance covered by a vehicle can be easily measured by a machine called odometer. Let's move on to the concept of speed. You must have heard speed. Speed is a rate of distance covered. Speed is a parameter by which you define who is faster and who is slower. A body with higher speed is said to be faster than the body with lower speed. So speed is defined as a distance covered by the body in a certain amount of time. Coming to the concept of velocity, the only difference between speed and velocity is if the speed is defined in a, in a particular direction, then it is called velocity. Hence, velocity is speed in combination with a certain direction. Let us define velocity. Velocity can be defined as speed in a particular direction. So it is measured in meters per second or kilometers per hour. Or miles per hour even we use the same units of measurement for speed as well here velocity is equal to rate of change of displacement or displacement per unit time you must have got a question do bodies maintain the same speed throughout the journey let's let's have a look at an example a truck covers a distance of 10 kilometers in one hour what is the speed of the truck? If you want to calculate the speed of the truck, you can easily calculate it by applying the equation of speed. Here the distance covered is 10 kilometers as given as mentioned in the given data and time taken is 1 hour. Hence the speed can be defined as 10 kilometers per hour would be your answer. But actually, do you think the body travels at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour throughout its journey? without a change in the speed of the body? Yes, absolutely. The body would change the speed. Hence, it is not actually the speed of the truck here. It is the average speed of the truck. Hence, the average speed of the truck is 10 kilometers per hour. So, you must be wondering what is this average speed? Let's have a look at the concept of average speed. All the bodies do not maintain the constant speed throughout their journey. They do keep on changing their speeds depending on the situation. So we define a quantity called average speed which is defined as the total distance covered in a total amount of time. What is the speed being shown in the speedometer? Is it just a speed 
or is it average speed? It's very simple. The speed which we observe in odometer is instantaneous speed of the vehicle, which means the speed of the vehicle at that instant of time. So it's not average speed, it's instantaneous speed, which is the speed at that instant of time. Let's move on to the concept of acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change in the speed of a body in a particular direction. Which means if a body is increasing its speed in a particular direction, which can also be defined as increase in velocity of a body. So the rate of change in the velocity of a body is defined as acceleration. So acceleration has got a mathematical equation which is acceleration equal to change in velocity by time taken. The acceleration can be positive or it can be negative as well. Acceleration is positive if the velocity of the body increases. And acceleration is negative if the velocity of the body decreases. The negative concept of acceleration is also called as retardation. Let's have a look at the example. Assume that the body is moving under gravity. Assume that you have thrown a body vertically upwards against the gravity of earth. We all know the gravity of earth acts perpendicularly downwards towards the center of earth. If you throw a body vertically upwards against the gravity, the body starts slowing its velocity. The body starts decreasing its velocity because of the gravitational pull which is vertically downwards. After some time, the body reaches its maximum height and comes to rest. Instantaneously, the body would travel, would start traveling towards the ground due to the gravitational pull of the earth. Here, in the first case, when you throw the body vertically upwards, the body is decelerating the, or the other way, it is retardation. And in the second case, when the body is falling freely under gravity, the body is increasing its velocity and which is called acceleration. Hence, acceleration is a positive phenomenon and deceleration is a negative phenomenon. For a body which has been thrown vertically upwards, we have deceleration and for a body which is falling freely under gravity has got acceleration. That's it for today. So in the second part of motion for secondary school physics, the topics to be covered are uniform motion, graphical analysis of motion and uniform circular motion.